As the Senate struggles with climate and energy legislation and Congress contemplates limiting EPA authority, a new analysis by the World Resources Institute, or WRI, brings clarity to the importance of regulatory tools in any approach. This analysis is important in light of President Obama's commitment to reduce U.S. emissions in the range of 17 percent below 2005 levels by 2020. Franz Litz and Nicholas Bianco, both with WRI, explain. Our analysis answers the question, what emissions reductions can the U.S. get without new federal le legislation? So we, we've looked at all of existing federal authorities across the board and have gone sector by sector to estimate the kinds of reductions we could get under existing federal authorities. We also ask if the states apply themselves alongside federal action, what, what kinds of additional, additional reductions can we expect from states? So for example, under the Clean Air Act, we have a range of possible policies, uh, including new source performance standards that apply to power plants, vehicle uh, emission standards under Title II of the Clean Air Act, those standards are expected to get uh, significant reductions from light and medium and heavy duty vehicles as well as off highway sources. With state analysis, we didn't do it quite in that same way. Um, instead, what we did is we looked at broader signals of interest at the state level for making reductions. And we looked at specifically economy-wide targets that were set both in legislation, executive order, and then as well the near economy-wide cap-and-trade programs that are being developed in the Midwest and in the Western states. So as we started the analysis, one of the things we realized from the very beginning is it was not possible for us to predict with a great deal of certainty precisely how each of the regulatory agencies was going to use their authority. What we tried to do is define a range of scenarios meant to capture the level of reductions that they could achieve. And we've defined them as lackluster, middle of the road, and go-getter. Federal agencies like the US EPA, DOE, DOT, and uh, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration can work together to use existing policies to reduce emissions at the federal level by about 12 percent. And when you take state action uh, and you assume that states will also follow through to the extent of their announced actions to date, you can add an additional 2 percent. So overall you get to 14 percent. It's 3 percent short of the 17 percent target that Obama committed to in Copenhagen. But we don't know what, what options will be available 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. And so there's a lot of uncertainty in this regulatory path. When one compares that uncertainty to comprehensive climate change legislation, which has imposed a, uh, an emissions cap across the co economy from uh, 2020 all the way out to 2050, it's, it's, qu it's quite uncertain. So we think this analysis is going to be helpful because as Congress turns to look at hybrid measures where uh, perhaps only the power sector is covered or power sector and plus large industrial combustion sources, it's going to need to find uh, the other tools to get the other reductions from the, from the remaining sectors. And that will likely have to come in a combination of these existing tools that we've analyzed w w together with some new tools to, to, get, to get us to the 17 percent. And the 17 percent, uh, as we know, doesn't even set us up for the long-term reduction. So we have to look beyond the 17 percent. We, we have to think how do we get to the 83, 85, 90 percent reductions that we're going to need by 2050?